Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you have a beautiful day and again beautiful day in area. You can see blue sky over the top there. So to continue with the theme that the garden in June with me. So I'm going to do several th several things again today. Uh, but I think <clears throat> I need to go out a little bit um, in half an hour because my friend she's gonna come over to text me to Bunning to get some potting mix. But first, I think I would like to have his own of my Fuji apples. Uh, if you watch my video for a while now, you know this is the first year that this tree bear the uh, bear the apples, and you can see all of its leaves fell off for a while now, and so. <laughs> Most on the tree, they are just apples. And lately, <clears throat> I, I mean, I have been having just uh, apple off the tree uh, for a few weeks or months lately. I just go, uh, go out and I just check if any big fruit and smell nice. I, I pick them off. Uh, but this morning, when I went out here to check the apples, I did notice that some of the apples, they fell off the trees. I think they were really ready, so they fell off the tree. So I thought that I'm going to go ahead to have it all of them today. Uh, because um, a while ago, when I... Uh, sorry about my hand holding the camera. It was quite heavy. Uh, so I, I remember a while ago, when my father-in-law and I, uh, and I built... Um, uh, the planter around the, for the tree, and uh, he, he um, and me as well knocked some some of the apple off, and I just uh, put it on the on the bench, uh, and then after that they ripe when more. So I thought that I gonna pick all of these apple off today, and if the one that they haven't really like, ripe ripened, it really ripe, and they can like, uh, continue to ripen off the trees. Uh, so I think either way, I could have very sweet and beautiful apples um yeah and this is my favorite apple so far that i got in the garden or i have eaten um in our area i think there's a market it's called farmer uh, epic farmer market and we used to go there to get the apples from the market uh but you know to compare those apples there and the apple that i grew uh like from our garden this one is just so much sweeter, full of flavor. Uh, yeah, so it's very different. Even the, the apples are the same variety we get from the market. You know, market, not supermarket. And still very, tastes very different to the one that I grow at home. So yeah, highly recommend it if you like to grow apples. And Fuji is one of uh, the best apples that I ever tasted so far. So let me just open the netting and have it an apple and maybe after that we're going to, they have time maybe to do some other job as well. Oh, let me show you. So in my experience, a uh, Fuji apple, when they ripen and they got beautiful copper red color like this, that means they are uh, ripened. And they got beautiful, beautiful scent as well. For me, the, the, the ap Fuji apple, they held on the tree much better than the Royal Gara. So, you know, um, Royal Gara, you know, when they are ready, we even we tuck a little bit and they drop off very easy. But for the Fuji, I feel they have a little bit more resistant, uh, than the Royal Gara. But I know they're ready because let's see, we, we add quite a bit of them and they are delicious. Um, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> they all look uh, beautiful, dangling down. Gorgeous. Okay, let me just go ahead and have it them.
And here it is, very bare, nothing on the tree anymore. And I got full baskets of beautiful apples. Uh, so this is the first year and it produces fruit. Uh, and I, uh, I think from next year when they produce more fruit, I should have thin them out better because at the beginning I didn't thin them at all. And after that, after my father-in-law and I knock a lot of apple off and I just realized there are so many and the apple were much smaller. And after that, I did thin another time out after we knock a lot of apple off. And I feel that I should have a thin a little bit more as well because some of the cluster, I still have a three and four apple in one little stem like this, you know, maybe I should have left only two uh, on the, uh, on one, you know, on the, the area that they produce uh, food. I think that could be better and the size of the apple will be bigger as well. Example, like this one, this one quite good size, you know, but some of these are quite tiny, tiny as well, you know. So, uh, lesson for me in, uh, next year, I will thin the mail, uh, better. Alright, so, uh, I'm gonna bring inside and put it on our dining table and we're gonna uh, eat them. Uh, I think, I guess every day, my daughter, she normally she doesn't like apple much, you know, but this, she loves it. She just eat it very quick, you know. And here is the next job that I want to get it done. Uh, so, I got one rhubarb bush over there. I think this one about four years old now. And it has been very productive. It produces a big stem all the time, you know. Uh, and I just, um, I just thought that maybe I can move it to a different spot. Uh, and then after that, that spot could be good for my climbing rose because I got one beautiful climbing rose and it can arrive very, I don't know, sometime soon. And well, I just want to make the room ready for it. And we haven't used much of rhubarb lately. Last year, I didn't use much at all. Only recently, I made one rhubarb cake. That's it. But it's very nice to have in the garden. So I thought that maybe I can just move it uh, to a different spots. And that sunny spot over there, I can put climbing rose and I can cover some ugly fence over there as well between ours and the neighbors boundary. Um, so yeah, rhubarb, normally they recommend we should divide them after a few years, four or five years, but so far I haven't divided it at all. So I think if I just move it now, I can just thin them, uh, some of the crowd that they're not productive and I can keep some of the big uh, crowd uh, underneath there. I don't know, it's quite large. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see it's not very productive and a lot of the big stems still on it as well. All right, let me to get to it then. Okay, so here you can see, I seem that I duck all of them up actually, that made the whole bush up. And I got a lot of little baby crow of the rhubarb. I love this variety. I'm sorry if I, I don't know what the name of this variety, but evergreen in our area and still producing in the winter. But you know, uh, another variety, um, they, I think it is more like green stock and it die up uh, like in the winter. And this variety, I like it because still producing over the winter when not much of other vegetables are growing. So that is really nice. And I love the, you see, the, uh, the red stem of the leaves there. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I love this variety. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with all the little baby crow years. Uh, I might try to give it to someone. If not, oh, I don't know what can I do other than the toss in the compost. Um, yeah, I will post it 
on the Facebook if anyone wants it. Uh, but that big clump there, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to move into one spot into my front yard. Uh, and yeah, I think it could be beautiful in that spot actually. So, uh, this corner, if you watch my video lately, you know that on my left side, I got the graph vine. Here it is, it's in dormant, and I got the beautiful clematis there. Uh, and on this side, I got the tonic blackberry. So, uh, I just uh, like, do quite, <laughs> quite a bit of like, digging and moving things around, actually. Let me show you. So, uh, in this area, if you watch my video, I got, I got some hello balls here. I did put some nice stepping, uh, here. So easier for me to work in this area, actually. I got two, uh, row bush, uh, over here. They are called the Jubini. Before they were here, actually. They were in the fun over here. And, uh, like through the, throughout the summer, I think they grew so tall, uh, or near two meter, or two meter, actually. Only one season. And then I, I thought that, no, I will move them a little bit further at the back. So I decided to move them back here. So in this spot, before I got two, uh, dwarf mulberry, but saying dwarf, but they grew so tall. And I didn't like the berry much, you know. And so at the end, I decided to move the roses in this uh, spot and walk down over here I got some like branches the rambling over here because uh, these are on uh, the, um, the mulberry uh, branches actually I keep them here because later I'm gonna use them just stacking for my peas and snow pea thing like that you know um yeah so um I got one peony bush here. Uh, I planted one peony bush here not long ago. And so this area over here, so before, uh, the, this is a um, variety of the row. It's very old. I think it called Sosibuana. Did a cutting from my neighbor. She gave me. Uh, and before it was in that spot, actually, there's a hydrangea over there. Before it was this Vuba spot. So I just switching several things around, uh, because the social uh, one uh, rose, it will like clamor actually, uh, and will big and torn. So I think it would be better like to put it at the backdrop. And after that, I just moved uh, the hydrangea from here to that spot actually, uh, because I think it could be nicer, like alternative, a little bit like evergreen. And because this um, variety of the ruba is evergreen and still producing over the winter, not as much over the winter, but still have enough for it to get through. Uh, if I want to, uh, so, uh, so yeah, just sweep several things around. It took me a while and they all get water and all get mushroom compost actually. Uh, so when you divide your rhubarb, uh, remember to do it in the winter when they are dormant. Uh, but actually this one not quite dormant, but I mean that it's not active growing. Uh, and when you plant your rhubarb, remember don't cover your crowd too too deep. Uh, you can see this is a compost and very very much level to the crowd here. So this is a, the area that they they produce a stem and the shoot. Um, yeah, and they love good drainage. And lot, normally rhubarb they love full sun, as uh, full sun. Um, but they can you know they can do quite well in pa patch sun as well. So as I mentioned to you at the beginning of the video that my friends who were going to take me to one lane to get some potting bricks. Yes, I got a whole bunch of potting bricks actually. And I went there, I saw some of the roses, bare rooted roses that I haven't have. So I decided to get some of those. Okay, let me turn the camera around and let me show you. So I got five of them. So each of the bag is a each different variety. Um this um um, you know, when I buy rose lately, either they for the fragrance or be either for the color or the shape of the plants. But I lately I lean so much on the fragrance of the roses. Okay, so this the first one. Um, it's called Barbara. 
try scent. I don't know much about this, but I saw this one. This is an intense fragrance, so that's why I got it. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and they say that they have a big bloom as well. It seems like this is hybrid G rose. Um, yeah, I will do that in the future over the review of the um, of the roses as well. So I will t uh, tell you more about that because at the moment they are very new to me, but I. Um, I don't think this is a real color of it. I think just a picture of the touch like that. But the color is uh, more like, um, I don't know, more like uh, adorable rose, I think. Uh, we'll see. I'm looking forward to it though because I just love the intense fragrance. Okay, the second, um, this one, um, Happy Tree Rose, it's called uh, Granada. I heard a lot of people talking about this and I do love the color of it as well. Uh, so that's why I got it and also they say they have beautiful scent as well. So um, yeah, I, I really like the intense rose fragrance. Uh, nothing you can beat that. And the next one, this is one of my needs for a while but I, somehow I didn't get it actually. But here I saw a bunny, now I get it. And this one is Flory Bundle, Apricot Nectar. And this one I did smell of the scent of the rose when I visit the nursery. But on that day I didn't buy it. But anyway, so uh, it got tight like lemony, uh, apricot color. Not, not, not this color actually, but it got beautiful scent. Anyway, so that's why I got it. <laughs> um, surprising is uh, like you know some of these um they stock in bunning or bunning stock them actually. Okay, next one. Ah, uh, okay. So this one is called Soul Sister. This very unusual color. Um, I don't know about the fragrance. Uh, I hear they say that might tea fragrance. Uh, so this one not strong, but I got it because of the color. I will uh. We'll see how they're doing though. I think a lot of people are talking about this and I know a lot of people they um they are in um you know in the warmer climate they grow this variety as well. Uh but I'm in the cold climate, uh quite cold climate, yes. Uh and yeah, which is it's gonna be interesting to see what the kind of the look like uh to compare to with, uh, with some of you guys live in warm climate uh if some if you grow all of this variety or some of this variety and you have any experience experience with them please let me know uh and um, among all, all of this uh, which one is your favorite please let me know okay so the last one is called pop john Two or pop John Paul two, and again this one I got it for the beautiful fragrance, and you can see the bottle over here. They say strong fragrance here, uh, and I love the shape of the bloom as well. Um, yeah, I already have a few uh, white um, rose. Like I got one corn is called Sugar Moon. That's a beautiful, beautiful scent. Uh, and I got another one, National Pride um, rose. It white and beautiful scent as well. So it's nice to add it to my rose collection. I haven't bought, uh, you know, bare rooted uh, rose from Bunning lately. So. I'm just curious how much wood they got in here though. I need to open them anyways because I need to soak them in the water before I yeah, I put them up. Okay, uh, quite well packed. Quite a lot of wood actually. Oh yeah, I think good wood system. Look at that. Tiny little stem on the top here but quite a good wood system. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, this one is a soy. They want it to soy. Okay. This one already start growing. This one's okay, doesn't have much of wood here, but it could be okay, I guess. And again, they have few, a uh, few little roots over here, not too bad. Oh, this one, the big roots, but they're already broken. I have to cut it off, actually. Okay. 
Okay, I think this one the small needs one. Only one hair one stem and only uh and hair only you know few boots here. Alright. So that it is. Um yeah, I think mostly garden in June with me just moving the plants around <laughs> and it's, there's some fun bit today that I can show you some beautiful new roses that I just got. Um yeah, I didn't intend to get them at all, but uh yeah, I've been you know, I've been looking at them and uh read of information about them but I didn't buy them online but here we are. <laughs> and sometimes we just go to the shop and then yeah, we just can visit just <laughs> so uh yeah i will not, i will pop them up a few hours later on but i will show in the video and um i hope that you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for sticking around with me and garden in june with me so thank you so much again and i hope see you next video bye bye